minutes, we do it alphabetically. That's just how it works. And so with that, we'll have Peter start off with his three minutes of uh, overview and introduct introductory remarks. Please, Dan. Peter. Good morning. Um, I guess I'm the person that you guys know the least. <laughs> um, I have, uh, let's see, let me begin by thanking you for letting me have the floor. Um, my experience working with the government has, uh, has definitely uh, brought me a wide range of skills. And I've actually had a hard time narrowing it down. But when I finally did, uh, after reviewing what was really important in what I believe should be in the coroner's office, uh, I think I'm well qualified. Uh, my experience working with uh, NATO, working with Interpol, and working with uh, the U.S. embassies overseas has definitely brought me uh, closer to what would be important in the coroner's office. <clears throat> Largely, the uh, coroner position is an investigative position. Um, you do have to have familiarity with the, uh, with the medical field. Um, I have worked with I've worked with the U.S. Uh, with the <clears throat> I'm sorry <laughs> with the uh, U.S. Army Mortuary Affairs with the uh, uh, U.S. Uh, American Red Cross um, on the urging of people that I'm familiar with after finding what I found online and doing a little extra research about the, uh, the coroner's office itself in the, in the last 12 years, I was moved to run for the position. Um, I spoke with several people in the community as well as um, uh, several specific people like uh, Aaron Tate and uh, Kathy Jones and a few other people who were important to me personally uh, before I actually ran. And their influence, as well as my experience, I believe, uh, puts me in a good position to run against Greg. So um, thank you for your time. Uh, a lot of information is available on the website. And I'll turn it over to Greg. Thank you, Peter. <coughs> thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank the uh, Chamber of Commerce for putting on the the issues and including the coroner's office. The first time in 12 years we've included in this, so I'm pretty happy to be here. But I do appreciate you inviting us. A little bit about myself, I actually grew up in uh, Kitsap County, going to South Kitsap High School, and then on to Olympic College where I graduated with a police science degree, and then head of the Washington State Patrol. In the State Patrol, of course, I graduated from the, from the Washington State Patrol Academy, and then during that time I was also an EMT uh, for the 13 years I was with them. After leaving the State Patrol, I went into overseas missions as well as uh, local churches here, and uh, I was uh, in Southeast Asia, China, Philippines, Hong Kong, and, and Japan, and uh, helped third world countries. Um, and then after I left there, I came back here, was a chaplain of the South Kitsap Fire District uh, for five years, and uh, let me back up just a little bit. While I was, while I was here before I went to State Patrol, I was actually a, 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 a fireman of the South Kitsap Fire. Uh, after uh, several years, I decided I need to have an income for my family, so I decided to quit and, and join the, the coroner's office. I applied for it, and they said my background was just what they were looking for. Uh, with the police background as well as uh, the compassionate background as far as the, the coroners, I mean, uh, the chaplains are concerned. So I was a deputy coroner for five years, and then after, um, after that, our coroner, Ted Zink, retired and prompted me to run. I did, and I won, so I've been to the coroner for the last 12 years. Um, during the last 12 years, actually it's the last 17 years with the coroner's office, I've done numerous um, death investigation classes, and I could go on with a long list where we take like, at least two classes a year, so I've got a lot of experience there. Um, I'm also the president of the Washington Association of Quarters Medical Examiners, or WACME, good, good acronym, um, and been the corner for the president there for the last five years. I'm also on the board of Compassion Friends, um, which uh, helps people with uh, children that have, have passed away. I'm also on the board of the Boys and Girls Club for South Kitsap, uh, appointed by the governor to the Forensic Investigation Council, which oversees the Tox and Crime Lab uh, for Washington State. And then I also work with uh, MAD and RUAD, which is Reduce Underage Drinking. We've been working with them for years on mock crashes and, and 
traffic uh, incidents at high schools, as well as uh, we put on programs every year. Some accomplishments that I've done was uh, we have a new facility. Um, I went all around the state looking at the very best of each facility and trying to incorporate that into what we want to build. We did that uh, this last year. I also applied for and received a grant for x-ray equipment for our new building, and uh, that should be saving thousands of dollars. I also appreciate the bipartisan support that I have from many people such as Russ Howdy, and Sheriff Ski Boyer, and the Sheriff's Guild, and, and many corners throughout the state. Thank you. Alright, very good. So with that, we'll alternate back and forth with the candidates having them to respond to the questions which you, the audience, have generated, and I somewhat organized into themes. Um, usually we like to start off with an easy one for the candidates, just to kind of get them warmed up, get them an idea of what it feels like to give a minute response to a question. And this one may need more than a minute, or may not, we'll see. But starting with Greg, and then we'll move back and forth. Greg, what does a coroner do? Well, that's a good question, I've been asked that a lot. Uh, <laughs> what does a coroner do? A lot of people think we just go pick up bodies, but that's not correct. We, we do pick up the bodies, that's just one part of our, our job. But we actually investigate the body. The scene belongs to law enforcement, if the body belongs to us, we do a forensic investigation of the body at the scene, as well as let's do an autopsy if it's necessary back at our, our morgue. Uh, the other things that we do is uh, make death, death notifications for next of kin, uh, and that could be you know, two or three o'clock in the morning sometimes, but we always make sure we do that at the utmost, at the very uh, first thing we do. So there's several other things that we do besides give talks, but um, I could go on forever, but those are the main things that we do. Um, well, I actually have a, a website, uh, and on my website I have a page dedicated to that very subject. Um, the role of coroner, in my opinion, and what I have seen, is more of a project manager. You have a series of people working for you. They go out and they collect information. They bring it back to you. You are involved in this process, but they bring it back to you. You get an informed decision. So you do go out and you, you find the body. Uh, you bring it back. You do your investigation, you have your medical examiner and your various people who are on the scene, you talk with law enforcement. As Greg said, it, the site does belong to them, but the body belongs to us. In the end, um, that's, that's pretty much it. You get the information, you make an informed decision, and uh, you work with the community. Thank you. All right, so the same with you, Peter. What uniquely qualifies you for the position? Uniquely qualifies me what for the position. What uniquely qualifies you for the position of coroner? Well, I believe, I believe specifically the experience that I've had abroad, uh, working with the government as an investigator, um, not just our government, in fact, uh, NATO and Interpol. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Interpol, but it's mostly an intelligence agency. They go out there and they gather information and they disseminate it out to the actual local governments that are in place. Uh, I was involved with. Uh, uh, investigating smuggling, human trafficking, and terrorists. Uh, we help prevent biologic weapons, small arms, explosives, human organs from being harvested, as well as prostitution and uh, various uh, mafia or uh, organizations such as the Serbian and Ukrainian mafia. Uh, we help prevent them from causing more disruption in our uh, area of operation. Um, this investigation that I did uh, specifically, we helped bring down 10,000 small arms that were going to go and kill uh, ethnic Albanians, and I feel that that was important because I was involved in that investigation. All right, thank you. Right. <clears throat> I think what uniquely qualifies me for this job is the fact that I was uh, with the Washington State Patrol for 13 years. I learned all my investigative skills there. I was also very involved with the community and with just being a chaplain in the environment, and uh, they really gave me compassion for people. I actually, one of the chaplains gave uh, many um, funerals for people I did not know, but I got to know their families and really that's one on one time with them. Um, and the fact that I was a deputy coroner for five years uh, helps me know the job before entering as the, the main boss. So that really helped me uniquely as far as this job is concerned. Thank you. Okay. Great. So, same with you, Greg. Drilling down a little bit further on this question of qualifications, can you describe what education 
specifically qualifies you for this job? Yes. Well, as I said, I went to uh, Olympic College, graduated as a police science degree, uh, Washington State Patrol Academy. Um, since leaving that, the uh, State Patrol and, the, and leaving the ministry, going into the uh, coroner's office, I've had numerous death investigation classes, and I could just I'd say a list probably 100 of them, but just some of the top ones is basic death investigation, homicide investigation, child death investigation, uh, WMD, weapons mass destruction, uh, fire deaths, underwater death investigation, and numerous others. Thank you. Um, my education would, I guess it would begin, obviously, uh, upon entering the military, uh, you're immediately uh, taught to uh, take care of people who are injured on the battlefield, uh, decide what happened to the uh, to the individual. Now, obviously, we're not going to be dealing with live individuals in the uh, coroner's office, but you get an idea of medically what would be wrong with them. Uh, you obviously, uh, whenever you're investigating a scene, uh, you definitely take care to, to relate all the facts you can uh, into record. Um, as for my education, we had classes, uh, innumerable classes, uh, some of them official, some of them not official. Uh, I can't specifically, you know, count them. I'm sorry. Great, thank you. And same with you, Peter. So how would I know, as a non corner person, whether or not you are doing a good job? Whether or not I'm doing a good job, I suppose you would have to ask the families that would be touched by the work that's being done. Um, it's not the person leaving, it's the person that's left behind that most notices what you've done. Um, I absolutely believe that. And I think that if you were to, to go and ask, that would be the person that would have the most to say about your particular performance. I also think that you should do uh, your job with respect to the community and you should have uh, care so that you don't uh, cause the community undue harm. Um, and I would do my best to prevent that from happening. How would I, as a non-corner person, know whether or not you are doing a good job? Okay. That's a good question. I, uh, <clears throat> I receive, as well as my deputies receive, a lot of mail uh, compliment to my deputies and myself for the job that we do and the way we treat people. And that's probably the, the biggest uh, feedback that we have is from families. Also going around, uh, we've uh, doorbelled literally thousands of homes and uh, most of the people I talk to appreciate the job that I'm doing. And we uh, do appreciate that kind of feedback. Thank you. 